This is Happy Monkey. This is Happy Monkey. Happy Monkey, it's Declan here. I'm a big, uh, big uh, fan and love lover of uh, Happy Monkey. Um, I am loving the Super Glue right now. I just want to shout you guys out and uh, wish you all a happy, uh, have a good day. So, what's going on, everybody? This week, the podcast has a sponsor, ArdentCannabis.com. They're known for the Ardent Nova, which is a decarber, but now they have a new Ardent where they decarb and infuse in the same device. So if you use our code MONKEY, M-U-N-K-E-Y, when you're checking out, you get $30 off your purchase. So please go on and check them out. They got a bunch of other devices. Hey, you might get lucky and find something that'll help you cook in your kitchen. We ready. Yes, everybody, this is how we start the Happy Monkey Podcast show. Today, we got some motherfucking legends, and it's always, always great for us to hear legends from our hood, you know what I mean? So it's like, not only we get this New York, like, love, native, it's just from our hood, it's different, you know what I mean? When it comes from your hood, and you know people from your hood started this, like, big wave, you know what I mean? So this shit is crazy. You want to give them more details about these two legends sitting next to Yeah, these right two legends, guys, a lot of what you guys look up to in the art world and in the, the graffiti world was because yeah. of these gentlemen. We got to our right, our brother Steve Kesso yes, yes, Glass, yes, yes, aka yes. SJK171. To my left, we got Henry161, yes, Henry Medina. Yes, yes. These gentlemen are part of the UGA, they are part of the Wall Riders. Yes, you know yes, what I mean? Yes. Book that just recently came out. They got a documentary coming out, All and they've shit. and they've done so much more. And we're here to praise light on them, and let you guys know all the amazing things that they doing. Our brothers from another mother, SJK and Henry One Six One on the Boulevard. SJK, please reintroduce yourself and let everybody know where they can find you. Your art, all the good <clears throat> shit. SJK One Seventy One. Yes, sir. From Washington Heights, I grew up on One Seventy First Street. Um, and uh, I grew up with Mike 171. Yes, sir. Shout out to Mike. Henry 161. When he came into the neighborhood, we all mobbed up together. And that's why I'm here today, because our, our, our good buddy, uh, Henry, just came from Puerto Rico. Yes, yes. So I wouldn't be here if he wasn't here, because I, I really wanted to be here and, and, and yes, associate sir. from the old times and stuff. So that's why we're here. Henry, reintroduce yourself. Tell the people a little bit about yes, yourself yes. and how they can find you and what they need to know. Um, Okay, uh, my name is Henry Medina. I was born in Puerto Rico, 1957. Uh, came to New York when I was about three months old. Moved into the LaGuardia Projects down on Cherry Street on the Low East Side. And then uh, at around the age of uh, about eight or nine years old, I moved up to Washington Heights, 161st Street. And... Uh, Back around 1969, 1970s, when I met Mike and Steve and other writers, and we just took off from there. And uh, pretty much, I just, you, you got to ask me where from, where from that point on. Where we you got you, we got you. That's what we're here for. That's what we're here for, brother. Yes, that's what we got. That's what we're here for. We're here for the beginning, you know. the past, the past, the present, and the future. Right. That's what we're here to talk about, to shine that's light on you guys, right? So tell me, what do you guys like? Like, what made you start even writing on the wall? Like, what made you, like, what, what, what possessed you to what do What was the because epiphany, before, guys? Before this, there was nobody. Nobody was actually, like, let's say, let me put uh, Ramon 157 on the wall. Nobody even thought of that. What made you think of that? Like People were writing in the neighborhoods. There was always writing all over the, uh, mm -hmm. uh, all over the walls and streets. They had stuff from the 50s and 60s where people just write their name, like Harry Loves Mary and, right. and all kinds <laughs> of other, you know. Jack and Jill went up the hill. Jack and Jill went up the hill. A lot of political stuff. A lot of yeah. political writing. A lot of political, lot of political writing. So uh, Tacky 183 was on 183rd Street. 
and he started writing his name. So now he started writing out mailboxes. He started going all over all over the city and, and tagging his stuff. Meanwhile, we picked up and started doing our thing, and that's how we started getting along and started tagging. I found tags just recently from when I took a picture of Mike on the block. He was like a teenager. And when I went closer on the brick, because we used to tell people we used to write on the bricks of the of the building, I found my tag. That was around 69. It was really faded. And I just spotted that. That's like two days ago I found that. So that's something I'm going to put in the book later on. Absolutely. That's but, crazy. Um, yeah. So then when Henry came on the block around 69, 70, that's when we all picked up together and we started writing our names. And we started just tagging all over the place and, and, uh, and spray painting and tagging and and just hitting all the train. We used to just walk anywhere and do whatever we want. Nobody would stop us, you know, because they were like just yeah. It was, they would look it was, at you in shock. Like, it was Gotham City for real. It was yeah, crazy. Right. So you know, Henry. So what was it for you that you know? What I mean, you know, I know that you already told me like you know you was in the mix. You was outside. You know the culture in New York. But what was it that made you feel that this was something that you know you needed to be a part of this wall riding thing, and that you know that you felt like it was a passion. Well, um, I come from an abusive background, you know, I, I, I was abused by my dad, you know, watched my mom get beat up, and um, so I, I, I hit the streets at a very early age, you know, and um, I, I met other guy, guys that were writers and used to write their names, and for me, it was an escape route. Mm. It, was, it, was a, it was a way for me to get out of the house and... Be able express to express your pain in a different way. Preoccupy my mind and busy, and just busy. get get rid of all that pain that I used to carry with with me, and I would just release it by just going out and you know spray painting or doing it with a marker or anything like that. And I felt like I needed to do it as much as possible. You know, only thing is, I got caught up doing it on just one train line. You know? <laughs> Whereas other people, as we grew older, other people started spreading out to other lines, right. you know. I think it's very important for us to point out that for me and Ramon, this is like, you know what I mean? Like, very important. And it's like, it touches home because we're both from Hamilton Heights, Washington Heights. And these gentlemen got to see you know, the way that those neighborhoods got molded before me and Ramon were born. So this is like, you know what I mean? Like, really like a history lesson for us. You know what I mean? Because, you know what I mean? You guys watched our mothers and our fathers arrive to the United States. So it's like, you know, it's big for us. You know what I mean, Henry? Yeah, kind of. I kind of molded the neighborhood into what it was because when I moved up there, it was all a lot of Europeans going to school, going working at the hospitals and all that. Mm -hmm. There were some Latinos. There was a few Puerto Ricans, a few Dominicans, a few blacks. Cubans. You know what I'm saying? A couple, very few Cubans. And then in, in, the influx started to come in. And it just so happened to be that during that time is when cocaine with Griselda Blanco was mm. starting to come into the neighborhood and she was putting it off to this man called Johnny TV. Okay? Mm. Now, what I'm giving you is information on how the community of Washington High became destroyed the way it did now. Okay? Mm -hmm. Johnny TV and his son, Johnny Chief Eaglebeak, used to run with us. We became bodyguards for him, for Johnny TV. He used to get his cocaine from Griselda Blanco, you know, and um, he started flooding the streets with the cocaine. You know what I'm saying? And at that time, we was too young to understand the actual value of money or how to spend it like, we, like they do now. So we were throwing our money away. But we were learning a lot about carrying guns, committing a lot of crimes, mm -hmm. you know, drive-bys, you know. And then once Johnny TV left, things just started to blow up even more and more. And then that's when all these cocaine houses started to show up. And, you know, then I, I me personally, I went away to the Marine Corps. And when I came back, I started doing stick-ups, robbing the cocaine spots, mm -hmm. you know. And... Uh, you know, and then the heroin came into play. And then the crack oh, came the crack into in the play. Take when the crack is. came into play, I had a spot on 168th Street on Amsterdam. And then little Jose El Feo took it over. I taught him how to do everything, but he decided to 
let crack come into the business. It was a heroin business, but he let the crack come in. And that's when all the shooting and all the killing started to happen during the 90s. But I spent the decades of the 90s locked up. Mm-hmm. Of probably none of that would have happened, honestly, bro. But since I left and I told him, stay away from that. Crack. He didn't listen. He got super big. You know, I don't know if you guys heard of him, but, you know, he got shot. He was paralyzed. He was working out of his van. He had cars with special, special compartments. That was like the era of the wild cowboys right there, right? Exactly. Exactly. He was running the wild cowboys. He was their supplier. So, you know, a lot of those things happened. You know, and then during that time, that's when Steve and Mike and them, they kept the graffiti going. You know what I'm saying? Because I was too violent to be with them. They weren't into all that violent stuff. I was. I liked it. They didn't. So they kept the graffiti the going. Everybody went their own paths. Yes, you know. And then Mike decided to go to the Navy. I decided to go to the uh, uh, Marine Corps. When we come out, you know, we took different paths. You know, we still got addicted, but, you know, we came out. You know, and like I said, he did. He took his path, and I'm now here we are. 40, 50 years later, it's time to put this together, you know what I'm saying? On the Happy Monkey Show, this is where we live. So now, we we on the Happy Monkey Show, so just just so you understand, exactly, this is what we're here for. So please, both of y'all, I I, I guess I want to hear both of y'all stories. I'll start with you, um, SJ. Um, Your first time getting high with weed, my First time that love story started. It was in the neighborhood. That's that's when the weed started coming out. Actually, it was was Mikey's brother with his friends, that had all the weed Mikey. and all, <laughs> Mike, all, yo, the, Mike, all these kind of supplies. I was like Happy Monkey back then. <laughs> <laughs> so when they came over with all the stuff, we used to watch them all the time. Like we look at their faces, and they were like, like shot, completely shot. And there's some videos that Mikey has some funny videos with the faces that they used to make. Like it would be un- unbelievable. And that's how every you know people started picking up and and, and everybody was starting getting high mm-hmm. and, and and smoking like joints the joints and stuff like that um it was alcopoco gold actually alcopoco oh, gold oh, yeah that that's a legend that's a that legend. was the main new york's yeah, that was new york's best at that time and people bring other stuff they had like hash and stuff like that uh, they had a uh, the 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 putty stuff it was oh, like opium, a opium, opium. opium. Yeah, yeah. it was like opium i mean that was coming in little by little, but it was coming in. And then after that, like, like Kenny was saying, at, at during that time, because we were still the, the young kids of the block, the, 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 the drugs started coming in. And that's when the that's stuff was started getting out of hand. You know what I'm saying? Everybody's just, you know, going nuts. We used to go into a lot of the drug dens, and they were heroin dens at that time. And yo, they were stacked with so, stuff so inside. The, the they, dens they, of heroin, like, you talking about, like, let's say... A lounge full of people, everybody high off. Everybody. There was lounges full of people inside, and the only way you get in there is if you knew somebody. You didn't know somebody, you ain't even belong there because it was somebody behind the door with a big shotgun, uh, a shotgun ready, you know, to <laughs> take you out. So, yeah, his name is Henry. Sometimes we spend days in there just hanging out inside the fucking apartment. And just like, just chilling, just like relaxing and stuff. And and there was a lot of activity going on. So from that time, like we said, yo, but you know, some, some shit might jump, jump down. Well, a lot of stuff did jump down. So now we, then we said, yo, we gotta, you know, we gotta get back into our game where we gotta start writing our names and start spray painting and stuff. So that's when we started continuing that. And Henry moved on, like, you know, doing different things. He, want, he wanted to do the graffiti, but then he got caught up and, and doing other things, you know what I'm saying? So it just continued that way until everybody went their path. But we, we stuck it out for a long time before a lot of stuff jumped down. And we can get into the gang stuff more, as Henry will tell you a little bit more about that. Well, well now, before, you know, I'm, I'm going to get more into you, because you, yeah. out of the three, is, is, is the bookkeeper. So we're going to talk yeah. about that. Now, Henry, we need to know about you, your first time getting high, walk us through that experience of how it went down, what kind of weed was it, where was you at, you was with a girl, what was going down? Wow, bro, you really going to take me back to when I was All the way back. All right, let me put it to you this way. I can't give you an age, but you figure it out. I was born in 1957. By By 1966, I was already sniffing glue. 
So you figure how old was I? <laughs> how old was I? Seven. Twelve. No, what? Seven. What is that? <laughs> Seven, right? No, nine. No, no, six, uh, ten nine. or so. Nine. About nine? Nine. nine. Yeah. I was getting high on glue, and one time, we would, cause we was in the projects, yeah. one time we was in an empty apartment, and I got in a baby crib, man. And I got in the crib, and I started sniffing glue, and I didn't know what the hell. Can I curse you? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know what it's the a fuck. It's the boulevard, man. I didn't know what the fuck I was doing. All I knew was they told me sniffing the back and you'll get high. Wait, I said, okay. So I get in the crib and I'm, I, I'm laid down in the crib acting like a little baby. Think I'm going to have fun. And I put the bag in my face. Who? 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 All the glue ran down on my face. <laughs> it ran all up in my nose. Oh, man. Oh, my Lord. And I... You say you want to know when was the first time. Then that's what happened. Bro. <laughs> what about the weed? Now, 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 with we, the weed, yeah. that came probably around 19... I'm going to say when I got to Washington Heights, bro. It's when I smoked weed. I was playing handball on Riverside on the courts underneath the highway, bro. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And some bum, you know, the train tracks back yes. there, right behind the handball courts. Yes. Well, then, there was a bum walking by, bro. And that, my... That man had a bottle of a wild Irish rose with a joint, bro. And he asked us if we wanted to have some, man. And, you know, I, you know, I, I, hey, let me get some. It turned out a good time. And that's when I got my first drink on and my first joint, bro. Mm -hmm. and, you know? Under the bridge, first of all, I want you to understand that was a nice where he just described this place. First of all, I'm from 157th Street between Broadway and Amsterdam, 156, 57, right? He just described two blocks away from me. All the way down the block near the water is on Riverside, everybody. Riverside, yeah. So I want you to understand, down 158 is the same place where I used to congregate with my friends when we first started smoking and drinking. So, you know what I mean? You're bringing it all the way back for me. Is that, you know what I mean? So, full circle. That's where we drink and smoke at, everybody. Right. Riverside was the spot. It still is the spot. It was the spot yes. for me in the 90s. It was the spot for my man back then. <laughs> Many years ago. ago. It's crazy. It's crazy. So now, let's go to my man over here on the right, the bookkeeper. The, the bookkeeper. The graffiti history buff. Because right now, you oh, what you got to understand... God. You were the one with the with the dad at the studio. You took the pictures. You yeah. were there, like you know, you were able to. Um, we spoke this off air before. And I mentioned this before. Uh -huh. You were able to create content before that was a thing. You're the content creator of yes. the crew, my G. So you know, you got all this. How many years of history you got in that book? I got fifty years. Good fifty good years of history in the book. Um, Actually, the first book that we actually came out, I mean, there's books before that. I looked, I looked up, you know, I did some research because I wasn't doing no research on, on our activity as writers and, and just growing up basically in New York City, you know, what your, your life and your accomplishments were. I, I did research. I started looking because I started hearing people saying, I'm from the 70s, I did this, I did that. I said, oh, yeah, nice, you know, and then I says. You know, because we started late 60s, but the, 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 right. the, the, the style writing and the pieces started coming out in the early 70s, and that's what we did. We started the pieces and the style writing, which was a very important part of the movement that everybody recognized. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me the difference between that and like a throw up and like what you're saying, you know what I mean? Because people might not understand. Okay. The style writing, there's different types of style writing, because the style writing that they got... They, they got from Philly, where Top Cat 126 used to write his name. Nice style writing letters. And very very skinny and tall letters. And, you know, numerically set up the right way. With us, we did style writing too. But in our own fashion, we had, like, nice curves. I had my K that I, I, I twisted. Mm -hmm. The 171, we put underline it with Mike 171. Then Henry 161, he would, like, curve his H and put a nice E and he would do like a nice style, like you don't, you know, you don't realize it because you like, you like what you're yeah, you doing. Yeah, you're doing what you're doing, right? You, you love what you were doing at that time. You know, you wanted to do your name like fancy. You know what I'm saying? Like from the heights, because that's how it was. You know, like we were like kind of like you know fancy guys, kind of. You know what I'm saying? It's always been a thing, man. Yeah. Uptown guys are the fanciest yeah. in the hoods, right? Yeah. So the two most important books I could say right now is the history of American graffiti. That's the first book that that Roger Gassman put us in. And he really like, like put us out there, like to to make sure like who we were with, 
with Henry, mm -hmm. uh, K161, Junior 161, uh, Nooney 161, Gano, Mike 171, and a couple of more of the guys that really were like right there at that time, you know, starting this movement. So real quick, what year was like, like for example, what was the first year you took, you decided to like, let me just start taking pictures of the shit that we've been writing? I got pictures from 69 because I, we, we debated with Mike when I, I took the first picture, one of the first pictures in the subway where he had his braces on. I said, Mike, when did you have your braces? He goes, I said, I'm 68, 69. I saw it right, so then that's when it is because he had his braces on. Right. When 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 I took the picture, because I didn't know, I I just took pictures. I just like took you know cameras on the subway and started going out in the neighborhood and started taking pictures. And the reason for that, you're gonna say, why did you take pictures? Mm -hmm. I'll tell you why, because my father was a photographer. He was a professional photographer. He had a studio in Manhattan on the on, on 27th Street, and uh, he's had it there for many years since he came to this country. When he came from uh, Greece. So he dragged us, me and Mike, into the store and said, mm. get your asses over here, because, you know, there's a lot of stuff that was going on, the gang shit and all this. Get your asses and learn something. So, boom, he took us by the ears, put us <laughs> in a dark room, started I was developing shit. I didn't even know what the fuck I was doing. I was mixing things, and shaking things in the dark, taking the film out of the camera. And then I started learning. Mm -hmm. So, 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 1969, right? Yeah. So, does that say that? Can you say? Can you pretty much claim you were one of the guys who pretty much first documented graffiti? Yes. Yeah, I could say that because actually I was. I didn't even know until until the, uh, the historians. Mm -hmm. Actually, we're historians too, because that's we, what that's what I was telling you. you know, we're I'm historians. You. I mean, right. the historians, the older historians, tell us that from them looking at pictures and stuff like that that actually I'm the first kid who started taking pictures on the subways and in right. the streets of my own work and our, fr our friends' work and others. So before 69, there was no one. Nobody was really, do I mean, people would document pictures, you know, you see yeah, pictures, you, you know, pictures old pictures, 18 and stuff, like and you see yeah, pictures but, all over. But not place. someone who's chasing no. what they're doing, you know, no. because it wasn't a thing yet, it wasn't graffiti yet, it wasn't, right? It was just... Uh, I think we tagged it. I think that happened when United Graffiti Artists came into the picture. That came okay. after. United. Yeah. I was taking pictures before no. United Graffiti. No, no, Artists. I know that. Yeah. I know that. But what I'm saying is, United Graffiti Artists just would brought it out into okay. more into the public. Okay, yeah. so that's yeah. what they're you know yeah. saying. Yeah. Yeah. Before yeah. that, you guys were just doing it for fun, for the love, yeah. and then was, they made I was it a doing thing for love. I said, right. just like kids yeah. say, "Oh, I want to watch my name go by." That we were saying the same thing. Right, right. But I was taking pictures of it. <laughs> You know what I mean? And then later on, people start staying in the front like this, in front of their names with pieces yeah, and gigantic right. like that and this and that. They were doing that. But I, that's okay. You know what I'm saying? Steve, I want to ask you, because um, I, I noticed, you know, I was doing my little homework. You know, yeah. I got to do my little research that. When did you start doing, like, squiggly things around your your art and also hieroglyphics? What, 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 was the, what was the epiphany when you started adding this flavor to the writing? I just wanted to let it loose on the subway, man. I said, yo, I got to make this shit. I got to hype this up. So I just started putting all kinds of designs, swiggly lines, arrows, and and, 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 and I just wanted to blow it out and then surround my name just with, where nobody can get to it. Just, like just the me. Egyptians, you know baby. Yeah. Hieroglyphs, make sure they remember <laughs> what's going on, man. Yeah, people would say, yo, man, what you doing? I said, I'm doing, you see what I'm doing? I'm doing right. nice shit, you know? I'm just doing what the fuck I'm doing. Yeah. Right. So we... Later on, like, I, I don't know, a few times, like, later that we were going to the, to the ghost yard, because that's where we started in the ghost yard and the 168th Street layups. We actually invented the ghost yard. Everyone was always saying, who, who started the ghost? We started the ghost yard, but, like, we didn't give a fuck, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. We just went there and just did our shit. Right. So, and then we got this guy, Turok. He was a fucking nut job, this guy. He, he would come and just, went, he went berserk with us, man. He wrote his name all over the, all over the fucking place. And he just, he was from 161st Street. Whoever was on 161st Street, bro, had the cojones, bro. I tell you right now, kid. <laughs> you had to have the cojones to be on 161. 161. So that's where, that's, that's where we come to my man Henry over that's here. It. So hold on. So this, this, this is now where we hit my man Henry to the left, man. Because this is when the bulldog come in. This is when the dog come in. You know what I mean? So, but through all these situations, like, like, 
Where's Henry? Like, like is Henry in the ghost yards too? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, where Henry's on the block. Henry's nah. getting busy. What he's doing? Henry's in the dope house, bro, and in the crack houses, bro. Uh, I'm, I'm mm-hmm. gonna be real, bro. Yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Oh, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Because I was, I, I was a stick up kid, man. You know, mm-hmm. so you know, I, I got into doing a lot of stick ups. You know, mm-hmm. when, when cocaine started moving into the apartments and stuff, you know. People were very careless, you know. The dope dealers were very careless in the community because it was the Scarface days, mm. you know. And everybody liked flashing their jewelry, and everybody liked going to the clubs and fucking with the women. And yeah. you know, me and my partner may he rest in peace. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna keep his name out of this. No, no, that's cool. You know, out of respect. But um, you know, we had women that you know, used to hook up with us and they work with us and we would pay them to go to the clubs and we would point out who to go after. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Line them up. And women, you know, these girls will go and, you know, they'll fuck them, they'll do whatever, then they will come back and report to us and tell us the layout, you know, of the spot and how they answer the door, you know what I'm saying? Do they answer the door with a gun in their hand? Where do they have the gun? Do they have the gun behind their back when they open the door? Do they have it on the side? You know what I'm saying? Do they have it like this? You know, uh, or do they even have a gun on them when they answer the door? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? We ask all these questions, you know, and um, even sometimes we, you know, if we have to get UPS uniform or mailman's uniform, you know, electric, you know, we gas uniform. Stick up, New York stick you know. up. This shit was wild mm-hmm. back then. And, you had uh, to get ready. You know, this shit was um, wild. So my life was different, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like I did the graffiti, but graffiti wasn't my main thing, you know. But I always supported them and everything. See, you know? but, but but this is why we but this is why we mentioned it here because regardless of the fact whether it was a side thing or not, you were a part of a pillar where we were just saying like if he was if he's the bookkeeper, you know what I mean? Then you the wild card because you were still involved. You were yeah, part exactly. of that historic moment. So that's why I, you know I'm trying to get in your head and trying to figure out like, all right, so what? You know, Henry was doing graffiti, but what, you know, you know, that's why we trying to, you know, ask you. Right, because a lot of people back then didn't understand gangsters wanting to do graffiti. Like, Mm -hmm. you know, you were either a graffiti writer or you was a gangster. There was no yeah, but you know what I mean? was a hybrid. And I was like, fuck that, man. I I do both. I do both. What the fuck? You know, why can't I do both? You know what I'm saying? So I was kind of like the one that broke that ice, you know what I mean? And then, then that's when people started putting crews together and, you know, Put in their, their, their gang names. So, what, what, when was the first time like you felt like when you threw up a piece like boom, this is that, this is my shit. I feel this one. When, when was the first time you felt that like damn, like when I was in United Graffiti Artists and I did the uh, uh, Joffrey Ballet on Broadway. They invited us to the Joffrey Ballet while they were having the ballet mm-hmm. on mm-hmm. stage. We was in the background, and they had these big sheets of canvas on rollers, and they kept rolling up and down like that. And as they were rolling up and down, it was me, Mike, it was SJK, it was a lot of us there. And as the canvas was rolling up like that, they had spray paint all there, and we would just spray paint it, you know, and the canvas could keep going, and we would just keep spray painting. And they were doing the ballet. I was having to smell all that spray paint, you know still, what I'm saying? And still, still moving. And this came out. This came out in the New Yorker magazine. This was a big thing, you know what I'm saying? Right. Back it's then, that was big. No, it's not big. Mean, what year was this? Still big now. Uh, if you telling me something like that? Seventy three. Seventy three. Was it seventy three? Mike. Seventy three. You know, you know that was, for me that was my biggest experience, man. Being on stage, being able to right. put Henry and Karen. Some gangster ass, ass motherfucker. <laughs> as, as a matter of fact, yeah, Karen, yeah, Karen was my girlfriend. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I was like, I forgot how old I was. I was a teenager. You teenager. know what I'm saying? And uh, for me, that was like the biggest thing, man. You know, when it comes to graffiti, yeah, man, that was, that the big, that was yeah. a pinnacle yeah. for you. Yeah, you know, like proud of that. Way, yeah. I'm able to put Henry and Karen, my girl's name. I'm putting Karen one seven one. You know what I'm saying? And, and it was good. It was just right. a real good feeling, dope, man. Right. Really a good feeling for a young kid. It was one of the best feelings I ever had with graffiti. Nice. It was the best feeling. You know what I'm saying? I'll tell you uh, another thing. They used to come, authors like uh, John Nahr used to come to our neighborhood and look for us because he wanted us to be part of the book. Yeah. 
But we used to chase everybody away. We used to chase reporters away. Gerardo Rivera. Gerardo Rivera. Oh, we're talking about yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Get the hell out of here, bro. You know what I'm saying? It. Everybody like, got chased away. So he went and got other guys to be in the faith of graffiti. He took whatever pictures he did. But meanwhile, that book came in out in 74. We were already doing shit. You know what I'm right. saying? Because 72 is when United Graffiti Arts uh, was established. And seventy three, we so were just, out in. Steve, Steve in, can you can you elaborate? Because like you know, we know a little bit because we did our yeah. research. But for the people out there that don't know exactly what is UGA United Graffiti Association, whatever, what is United it? United Graffiti Artist was started by Hugo Martinez. He was a college student in Manhattan, and he came. They asked him. The city came and asked him, "Can you go look?" Well, he wanted to do something for like he uh, had a thesis. Yeah, he to had do. a thesis to do. So and that, he chose yeah. to to he chose to do his DC on this graffiti thing yeah. that's going on in the city. But the city asked but, him, "Can you find these guys who right. are causing all the?" Part of the DCs right. was to find these yeah. kids, right. And you know, do something, you know, get them out of the street, right? So, so he came you? looking for us. He came okay. looking for us. And he so found you. Let, let, let Henry take it from there. Okay. So, wait, so okay. he okay. found y'all. So, what? Okay, what so we hang. We used to hang around a lot at Jew Park. On 173rd and, and um, Fort Washington. Um, Fort Washington. Fort you know, we used to run that park. You know what I'm saying? Our gang yeah. used to run that park. So one day, they, he, he comes looking, asking about Henry 161. So, the, you know, of course, you know, the fellas stopped him, you know. Yeah. Oh, like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, what's going on here, man? Why, you know, why are you looking for Henry? Blah, blah. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So then they came over. Yo, Henry, this guy wants to talk with you. Do, 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 do. I said, okay, cool. You know, so we started talking. He said to, you know, he explained what he wanted to do. He wanted to, that he wanted to get a couple writers and he's willing to buy markers and spray paint and, and we can go to his house and paint and do, you know, our mm -hmm. artwork, you know what I'm saying? So we're kids. We're 14, 13 years old, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. We're kids, so we're like, yeah, man, Fuck we're down, yeah. you know what I'm yeah. saying? It's mm -hmm. something to do, man. Yeah. We ain't got nothing to do. We're hanging out in the park, getting high, yeah. you know what I mean? Doing acid, doing whatever freaking drug was available, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> you know? New York shit. Like, so, so, wow, shit. So why not, you know? So he asked me, I said, well, well I, got, I can get Mike, you know, I, of course, these are my dogs, bro, you right. know what I'm saying? Right. Bro, I, I cut my arm off for these two brothers here, oh, man, man, you know what I'm saying? Bro, you know, and they know that man, you know what I mean? I'm not gonna have to drop up a dime, I'm here for them, man, you know. And and so, of course, that you know, I mentioned them, yeah. and we started going to this guy's house, Hugo Martinez. So, you know, I, as it started to spread, you know, we, we got more and more writers, you know what I'm saying, and then we moved, right? Is that the way we went, right? Yeah, we yeah. moved to yeah. we got the place on Jamel. On, on off of Amsterdam on 160, what was it, 167? 168. 168? 170 and 169 in Jamel. On Jamel. You know, we got the warehouse, you know, and you know, we started making canvases. And then we did the 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 the, the ballet thing, you know, doing the, the whatever the yeah, hell they call crazy. that yeah. shit. We so they started making money. He started making money, bro. Bottom line is he right. was making money. Right. All right, but I'm a youngster, man. I got a girlfriend, man. I'm trying to get high. We having a party Friday night at the place, bro. I want to fucking get high. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I want to go. I want to go get stoned yeah. with my girl. <laughs> hey, bro, man, I ain't got no money. He's gonna make, and I get twenty dollars. Yeah. He told me no. Oh. What? And I'm like, wait a minute, bro. <laughs> We've been selling paintings. You look at all the shit we got here. Right. Can you, why can't I get 20 bucks, man? I want to bring my girlfriend, man. Right. You know, I'm, I'm proud of what I've done here, man. <laughs> 20 you hours know, I want to show my girlfriend what I've done, what I've accomplished, you know what I'm saying? And he, he's like, nah, nah, nah. I said, oh, okay. All right. That's cool. So I left. You know, I told Mike and Steve, I said, listen, bro, this is what's happening, bro. I'm going to get the rest of the homies. I'm coming back to whip this dude's ass. <laughs> y'all coming with me or y'all going to stay here, man? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <Get money going. laughs> so they came with me. You know what I'm saying? And we came back. 
you know, with the rest of the fellas. And, you know, they we started fucking the place up. Or we started fucking up all the walls and everything, you know. And then I was busy fucking homeboy up. I didn't give a fuck about no pain or fucking up a wall. No, nah, hell no. I want to fuck up this motherfucker here that don't want to give me $20. <laughs> you know, that's what I want to do. It's like, uh, <laughs> see, uh, see, see, look, that's all you asked for. No, when, when, when we spoke to Mike, like, he told us that it was so much love and so much passion. And as soon as you get the money involved, everything, everything changed. changed. Everything. Oh, oh he got So this, now, that I'm, now that I'm older, I believe, I believe that what Hugo Martinez did was he took a bunch of young kids, manipulated them, mm -hmm. got his theses, got to make his money, because, you know, the UGA, after, after that ass whipping that he got, you know, of course, I, we got thrown out of the club, you know, of course, course, you know, and he kept it going with other writers that came from out of, out of town, you know, from mm -hmm. the Bronx, from the lower downtown, you know, and I told him, nah, bro, that ain't happening. You can't have writers come out of fucking Bronx over here, bro. This is my, this is our, this is our neighborhood. You know what I'm saying? You can't do that. So you either move your building or they get hurt. Whichever one. Exactly. So he moved his building. You know, that's when he went downtown, opened up a gallery, whatever the fuck he did. You know what I'm saying? I, I didn't give a shit by then. You know, I just wanted him to do what I asked of him. You know what I'm saying? And, um... I feel that what he did was he used us, manipulated us. He seen an opportunity to get paid. He got paid. He paid for his college, and he became a fucking doctor now. He's a pediatrician, and he made a stack of money off of, you know, exploiting our artwork. Mm. That's what he did. He took us and exploited us as children. Correct. That's the way I'm looking at it now. Of course. I didn't think of it that way when I was a kid, but now I do. I, I, that's what I believe he did, bro. He had a thesis to do in college. He exploited us. He didn't know he was going to run into so much money. He didn't know that. Right. But when it happened, the greed came in. Yeah, he, he tried to keep and everything. changed everything, bro. Yeah. You know? Crazy. So who knows how much bigger and how much more profound the movement could have been if he didn't get greedy. Oh my God, bro. Uh, that, it could have got so much bigger, bro. But it was big know. because when we had the shows in, in the city, like Razor Gallery and stuff, Andy War, Warhol was coming over and Crazy. expressing his, his emotions towards the new art that just, you know, was, yeah. was coming out. Amazing, everybody, right. was, everybody was liking it. I mean, some people were against it, but then it was, the, the value of it was the, the the beauty of it, that was the, the value of it, until people wanted to sell it. Like you go, we wanted to sell these things, you know, say, yo, we're in a gallery, we gotta sell, sell, sell. But the money never came about. Some people got paid, some people got their money because they were on top of it. But we were kind of lax, we were saying, he said, you gonna get your money? They said, all right, no problem, we're gonna get our money. And that's why Henry was, on, was well, he, he laxed on it because, you know, he was doing other things. But then when you, when you get promised and then you don't get your money, that's when you get uptight. You know, a young mm -hmm. person's going to get uptight, especially like when you're getting promised. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So that's why a lot of things happen. When you get promised something, shit happens. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's how, that's the city, you know, the way the city works. So, so, so if, the, if this UGA thing didn't go down like that, it, it, it became big, but it could have been bigger, you think, Steve? It could have been much bigger, much bigger. Yeah. It, it was and really going well because we were doing a lot of, we were building, you got to understand something, we were building our canvases. From the wood, ordering wood, two by fours, and you got to remember, two by threes, building it with nail guns, mm -hmm. nails. No, not even nail guns. Just hitting the nail but with the nails remember? with a hammer, hitting them, in, and then stretching the canvases, putting gesso and role play. I remember all that shit. And then hip hop then, came into play, yeah. also. You yeah. know, and graffiti was the big player on the hip hop was, was connection. A big, you know, what I'm saying. How as was the, that when you saw the that? Hip -hop, hip -hop as the hip hop lifestyle was picking up. That's when they really started using the graffiti on a lot of yeah. the backgrounds yeah. on their mm -hmm. videos. Yeah. If you look back at the old videos at MTV, you yeah. know what I'm saying? When MTV first came out, most of all their videos got graffiti in the background. A lot of that graffiti is well-known writers that we've all socialized with, with in one way or another. Right. You know, in one, whether it was in a train yard or in a gallery, you know what I'm saying? But the hip hop, you know, it, that, that really, that really started to take That off. magnified the graffiti culture. You know, so, yeah, it was a part of the movement, you know, and it's just like, 
the graffiti as the graffiti blew up, the music was changing. Then you know, of course, the hip hop came in, the dancing, all the twisting and turning on the floor. You know, I mean, personally, I was already getting a little older than that. You know what I'm saying? Besides, my mind was in. You know, my mind. Yeah, you was you, you was know, trying was to get money already. Right? Right? So, I, yeah. I was strapped all the time. I wasn't <laughs> thinking about spinning or none of that. I was strapped with my eyes open, man. You know what I mean? <laughs> but you know, it, the graffiti and. I believe it started out as a a, 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 a criminal thing, mm -hmm. but now they don't look at it that way anymore. Now it's be, it's an art. It's an art. It's an art. It's, it's art. It's an art. Whether they like it or not, it's become yeah, it's an art. art. Yeah, no, you it's art. You know what I'm saying? You got some really good artists out there, you know, in spite of the fact that I don't understand half the shit they be writing on them walls, but, <laughs> you know, just the way they can make the connections, the, connect, the way they coordinate mm -hmm. the colors and all that. See, we didn't... We we don't know how to do that. Us three here, we don't yeah. know how to do that. What we did, what we started was doing the little stars and clouds and yeah. stuff. You know, we just we were just starting to add to our name. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know, and then it just from that point in, just kept on going. So let me ask you something, guys. When was it that you felt like that? the train became one of your biggest canvases. And Whoa. you guys said, we got a mobile billboard that goes all around the city. We're gonna jump on this thing. When we stop going to school. <laughs> no, we school, cut class, so, every, yeah. cut class every day and meet up on the subway. Tell the story, okay, Steve. So tell them. Really, all right. Keep it right. Keep it was right, Steve. You, you're thinking too long. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> tell the truth. You trying to be nice. Fuck we didn't nice. gather up in the neighborhood on 171st Street. And that's where we made decisions to go into the train yards and start just hitting the trains inside and out. We used to, as if we didn't go to train yards, we'd just go in the trains and just take our spray can and just go nuts right in the can, just walk right through inside all the cars, the train, inside, inside the, the train car. While people were there, we didn't give a shit who's looking at us, just write our names everywhere. <laughs> I said we wanted to go crazy, like right in front of people. We should just do that. Just walk all over the train cars, just write our names. Now, for stylized lettering, like I said, Henry don't realize it, but he had a nice style because of the way we were shaping our names, you know, getting ready to stylize. And that's how when I was starting to curve my uh, uh, J and then put the K with curve and put 171. Mike put a special E and put his I and stuff like that. Then Henry would curve his H. He wouldn't just put a plain Henry, like, you know, you see Henry yeah, you straight see down H. H. Yeah. You know, that's like Henry loves Mary. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like that. But that we were stylized stuff. writers. We started curving our stuff, mm -hmm. especially our friend Jose, Jack Starr. That's, you know, we talked about him on the last run when Mikey was here. Mm -hmm. He had a special style where he just went nuts and started curving his J and E and C. I helped him a little bit on that part, too. And then he just went for it. He just took off with his name. He, he, he did one of the best styles to this day, he has one of the best styles. Wait, so, so what year y'all started going crazy on the train? Around 70? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm going to say 70. 70. From yeah. 70 to 72, we, that was we, like... It was possessed. non -stop. It's like I said, right here, it's, it's like a man. mobile billboard. Yeah, right at the time, you didn't realize. The train, right? That's when the heavy we hitting... Inside the train. We, used to, we used to cut Get crazy school. with it? We used to cut school. Yeah. Because we used to go to George Washington. We went to George Washington. 143. We went to George Washington. 143. Stitt. I don't know what it's Yeah, Stitt is still there. I went to Stitt. Stitt is still there. Stitt still there. And what happened was... We got tired of going to school, man, because <laughs> we were smoking a lot of weed, man. Not only you know that, you did what you wanted and, and in we school. And we were having uh, the, the uh, uh, hooky parties. Uh, hooky you know, parties. Yeah. A lot of weed in the hooky parties? Where, yeah, you know, yeah. for those that don't know what a hooky party is, you, know, know. Know, you don't go to school and we pick somebody's house where mom and dad is at work and we party. <laughs> yeah. you know, and if we didn't do that, we would meet at the subway station on 168th Street on, and the number one. Mm. You know what I'm saying? We would meet that there. Dream, and right? once we would meet there, the group, this, you know, we would separate those that want to go party, those that want to go spray painting and some of us will go spray painting we go down to Chinatown mm -hmm. with our coats you know the, we can rob the yeah, cans the army you know coats. what I'm saying down in Chinatown oh. and we would rob all the cans and then we would spend the day just riding the train up and down you know spray painting the train spray paint fuck it that's where we have know. we might as well spray paint everything right? you know yeah yeah but okay that's 
That's where we spent a lot of time spray painting, man. During 70 to 72, shoo, man, we were spray painting it. everything. Yeah. If, you know, and, and, and don't get caught without a marker. Don't get you caught know? without I got, I got caught in Midtown one time by a cop, bro. And I had two cans of fucking spray paint, man. And he said, we used to sneak into the theaters, even though they were 50 cents to get in. <laughs> but we used to go in there because you could hang out all day, smoke weed, you know, and watch Bruce Lee all day. And, you know, we used to have sneak in through the back in the alleys on 42nd Street, right? So I, I, I'm sneaking in through there with the homie and we get caught. Why does the cop take my spray paint, bro? He spray paints my face green. Oh, <laughs> he said, oh, so you like to spray crazy. paint your name, huh? And I'm like, no. And he goes, yeah, you do. Hey, <laughs> God, you you want to watch movies? movies? Well, watch them now. Oh, <laughs> oh man. That's some shit, my G. Man, I had to spend yeah. the free... I was going to watch my movies, bro. Because I couldn't go home, you know? I was supposed to be at school. Yeah. So I watched the movies, spray painted it at all, but, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Harry, yeah. let me ask you, during your time, you know what I mean? Because you said you always smoked cannabis here and there. What was some of the best time when you seen the best weed you seen here in New York? Or whatever did you start seeing, like, better weed start coming in, like, in New York to, to smoke? Depending on what what year I've been smoking for a long. That's what I'm saying. What I'm saying since you started, when did what years did you start seeing like better like? Better well, when I more? started smoking, bro, it was when it was Colombian that was coming in. That it was kind of like, like almost that color. Crazy. Go, 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 man! Go. Was, oh my god! And, and as good as it looked, that's how sweet it was, bro. Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> you know, and then they had this one called Mota. Which was oh, black. it was that. like a black, and you had to like crush it with your hand. Oh lord, you get you get three thin paper joints, three little pin paper joints, ten dollars. But man, that one joint could get four or five of us blasted when we were kids. I can't say that now. Yeah. Of course, at that time, because it was like there wasn't that yeah. many different yeah. options. You know, and then of course, then you had the regular garbage. You know, that was coming across that, that the border. Guy. You know what I'm yeah. saying? You know, and then I moved, you know, I'm in Florida, but the best is California, by no shot better. Yeah, yeah, so that. I I, eat, I learned how to grow, I learned how to make my butter. Oh, hold on, you know so let's saying? talk about this time of my man Henry you know in California, oh, hold <laughs> on. Oh no, we can't skip that part, this is a weed show, we gotta talk about the part where you was growing weed, my brother, what kind of weed you was growing? Oh, We bro. can't just skip that. <laughs> I was growing purple OG. Purple OG. Um, indoor, outdoor? Oh, indoors, bro. Ooh. I was indoor. And I wasn't really, I wasn't the one growing, but I was assisting them. Hey. It was his house. That shit his is no plans. joke. Them shit but you know, I, I was, you know, was chopping leaves, you know, and then, you know, I spent two or three days on the table with my wife, with her two kids, you know what I'm saying? And we were all hanging out, family thing, cutting <laughs> and. and and step on it, put it in my shoe. There's <laughs> <laughs> too much weed, man, for me not to steal none. Fuck that. <laughs> Let me tie some of this grow. <laughs> but um, yeah, I, I learned how to grow. You know, it's not as easy as people think. No. You know what I'm saying? No. And um, but I, my real time, I spent. I was doing case management. I was working with young. Um, kids on probation. Isn't that the um, United Players organization you're talking about? Yeah, yeah. Oh, let's talk yeah. about that then. Well, what happened was I came out in 2000 after serving 10 straight years with the mm -hmm. feds. And uh, actually, I got caught on 168th in Amsterdam. Yeah. You know, doing a favor for somebody. Jesus, yeah. I, was, I had just came Jesus. home, you know. And then I was in now six months, bro, and I did them a favor. But it's okay. It is what it is. You want to be in the game, you got to pay the price. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, when I came out, I chose to go to California. You know, uh, I ran for a year because they wanted me to come back to New York. And I was like, I ain't going back to New York. If I go there, I'm going to die. Mm -hmm. Or I'm going back to jail. So the girl I had told me, look, I got fake ID. I got jewelry. <laughs> I got a car. Oh, that's I got that's right and die right there. She's like, come on, on Friday. We got it all. I said, let me see. Okay, I got that. New York. What do you got in New York? Mom? Trouble. <laughs> mm, heroin? Cocaine? Yeah, uh, nah, nigga. Come on, let's you know go. What? Let's go to LA. Yeah, let's I go, motherfucker. They opened the doors, bro. I was out, bro. 
I ran for a year. I worked, you know, in L.A. I worked two jobs under the alias. They almost caught me. I got away. I was able to come back to New York. I turned myself in. After 10 years or 11 years, because I had a year on a run, I go and they put me in front of the same judge. Oh, <laughs> in front of the same judge that sentenced me. Damn. 11 years later. So he asked me, you know, I, like, what happened? And I like, I, you know, I want to turn myself in. I want to correct everything. You know, I haven't been in trouble, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, so he let me go. I went back to California. Then I left because my girl got into heroin, and I left to San Francisco. I started working with the young bangers. What are the young bangers? Uh, gangsters, the young mm -hmm. kids, okay. you know. You mean the young gang, bang gang bangers? But let's say I was working with kids from the age of 12 to 18. Okay. When you say you're working with them, in what capacity? Uh, school, I was advocating for them at school. I would advocate for them at court. You know, the pro, yeah. the, let's say the pro parole officer or the probation officer would give me the client, you know, and say, Henry, I need you to help me with this, this kid. Person, right? I have a better relationship with the kid because I understand. I grew up like he did, you know what I'm saying? So, Joe, hey, come here, bro. I'm going to take you under my wing. My you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I'm you know, man. and I help you out of school, you know, I help you out there, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Blah, 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 you know, and exactly. it moves on from there. And, um, you know, I love doing it, you know, because, you know, I was saving lives, man. You know what I'm oh, saying? you saved. And, you saved. You know, and I was in a world, I was living, I grew up in a world where lives were being taken, you know. And for me to be able to have the opportunity to come out and save lives is a big accomplishment for me, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And... I'm gonna stop there because. Nah, yeah. What you think? I get emotion. Nah, that's, that's good. good. That's, that's good. good. Ain't nothing wrong with you that. You know, uh, I got certificates from the mayor's office. You know, uh, certificates of achievement, of accomplishments. That's right. You know? That's what so we here for. This shit can shine that light, I, baby. I actually worked with Kamala Harris, who's running for vice president, mm, that's crazy. and me and her had very, very. We, we didn't like each other because when she was in San Francisco, she locked a lot of my kids up unnecessarily, mm. you know? Mm. She messed them up, mm. you know? And then she's laughing on TV, talking about she's smoking weed. But you got my kids locked up? Yeah. That ain't cool, you know what so I'm saying? So how do you feel, Henry, that these kids, like, or that or that you did to, to help them relate, and what did you save them from that they were going through, you felt? I, some of them, I, uh, I saved them from from losing their lives, literally. I mean, I picked one off the street, getting stabbed, getting beat up mm -hmm. from by one gang, and I threw, I, I, I wasn't supposed to, that goes against protocols at my mm -hmm. job, but I didn't give a damn. I'm not gonna let the kid die. I picked mm -hmm. him up, threw him in my car, Took ripped to out to the hospital and got him there. You know, I'm into saving lives, bro. You know, and I believe I was doing that with them. You know, I see them now, they're adults, they have children, and they see me, they hug me, man. Right. Some of them call me Theo. I have some of them that consider me to be like a dad, you know. And then again, there's some that, you know, they didn't want to listen to me. Oh, okay, bro. Oh, how much fucking time you got, bro? Damn. 30 years? Damn, bro, you fucked up, bro. Man. You should have listened to me. Man. I have those, you know. But I have more success stories than I do. I never lost a client to the streets. Though I have friends who I work with, co-workers, who took vacations and, you know, give me their clients while they're on vacation, so I build relationships with them. I have some of those get killed. Mm -hmm. You know, like we once took a kid out to the movies, bro, we made sure he went in his house, and next day, we find out he's dead. And that's part so of the So the gang, the gang violence is really bad out there in California, in, in the Bay? Yeah. Yeah, as a matter of fact, on Saturday, two of them just, two kids, I just got a call. Um, two of them got shot in the head at a, one of those side shows with cars. Wow. Two of them got shot in the head, bro. Wow. You know what I'm saying? And the sad part is, bro, it was on video. Sad, man. You see the dude laying there, man, with his head busted, man, bleeding out. Like, why y'all letting that go, man? You know, why you showing that on video? And then you wonder why we're where we're at now, you know. But, you know, it's brothers like yourself, you know, that, you know, y'all see the movement and you, you stay in focus, you know what I'm saying? And that's what it's going to take, man, to stay focused, you know, keep the love in your heart, you stay know. Stay positive no matter stay what. Positive. You know, stay positive, Papa, you know. That's how it works, man, you know.
Nah, man, and it's like, you know, part of it that it keeps me and Ramon grounded and focused is like, you know, talking to people like you guys that have been through a hundred times worse situations, worse circumstances, and you're still here, and you guys are still positive and optimistic and still trying to, you know what I mean, uh, you know, move the culture forward and do positive things. So what do you think? Did you ever think, Mr. SJK, when you started playing around, writing names on the wall, that it would turn into a global movement that it is today, revered by the world? Did you ever think Word, that? Like 69, now we're in 2020. Think about it. I, I never would think that the movement would come this so far. Like, I really envisioned when I started doing this swiggly lines and, and stylized lettering, people were saying, what are you doing? I said, I want to write my name like fancy, you know, nice. And then people started saying, oh, let me do this. You know, let me start this kind of stuff. And so I could have put characters and stuff like that on, on the subways, but I didn't want that. I was more into like calligraphy type stuff. You know what I'm saying? I, I like letters. And I like to like do them in a, a different way where nobody would... With, with hieroglyphics, man. Yeah, you hieroglyphics, left your, you like the way that the Egyptians left the pyramids, yeah. you left the train yeah. stations, the walls. Yeah. You know, you left your mark in this world. Exactly. You know, like it's like when you're a kid, like you're looking, you're looking at TV and because TV just started coming out when I was a kid. You know what I'm saying? Like you know, like little box TVs. You're looking at it, and then cartoons are starting to pop. Say, wow, look at these cartoons. So I take paper. I start. I started looking at the cartoons. I start drawing the faces and stuff like that. So I got into art like that by looking at something that I liked. You know what I'm right. saying? Like people, you know, kids, kids got a, a, a expanded memories and they, they, when they see things, they start liking a lot of different things and then they start experiencing things. But you know what? It's sometimes it's how you grow up. It's through family. It's if you don't have a, the, the, the good support system behind you, it's hard for you to do what you want to do in your life. You need some Early, kind of support. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? If you don't have community support, family support, what do you have? You have the streets. Right. And you're open to the streets. You're open to the elements. The elements can take you anywhere in your life. You uh -huh. know what I'm saying? It could destroy uh -huh. you. It could, do, it, do, it could do good for you or it could do destroy you. So sometimes you have to have a, a mind inside somewhere to wake you up and say, I got to do something with myself. You can't just give up. That's the thing. A lot of kids give up. They, they start taking... Uh, you know, different types of pills and mm -hmm. stuff, you know, mm -hmm. depression stuff. We never took these kind of things. We just, if we got, if we smoked a little bit and did a couple little things, that's just for enjoyment. It's not, we have, we weren't depressed or nothing like that. It's just like, we, it, it was like what, what the kids were doing back then. It wasn't about depression because we had a good time. We had good times in our lives. As kids, I don't know. I mean, you had to grow up tough, but you still had a good time. You know, it was, the streets weren't easy. You had to be like, if you were a, a, a boy, a kid, you had to be tough. You, if you didn't, you were going to get punched out, smacked yeah, or whatever, you know, bullied, spit at, yeah. bullied, all that shit. Fuck the school shit where they have bullies. We're talking about this. You're going to the yeah, street? Dude. That's a different ballgame. It's a different ballgame. You know, you, you, get, you get, get caught up quick in the street. You know what I'm saying? You get, like, you get really caught up. So you got to somehow, like, wiggle yourself, uh, wiggle yourself around. And I'm not saying you got to go meet up with good kids because... Everybody was a kid doing different things. And it was not like perfect kids unless you're living in somewhere in the suburbs or somewhere else where you're not going to see the city life. You know what I'm saying? You're mm -hmm. not going to see another city life. City life is tough. And you got to be there to withstand everything. Now, I want to ask you guys another important question because me and Ramon talk about it and we like got a half, we got like half of the experience that you guys have. What do you guys think about New York, 1969, 1970, to New York now, and let's go specifically with the Heights. Like from when you left the Heights, from that era, 1969, 1970, to what it is today, what do you think, Steve? I can go back up there right now, like just take a drive up there, and I see the neighborhood still, a neighborhood where I, I have the good memories of how we grew up. I still see it. And I still see the people there, you know what I'm saying? Because those are the people I grew up with. Faces that I recognize, that I blended in with. Mm. You know, even though I have my, my culture, but I have a culture and the people that were in that neighborhood have a culture too. And that's what people don't understand. Sometimes they don't understand cultures. And that's the problem people have, you know what I mean? If you understand a the culture, then you understand the person and the people, what they're about. So when I go up there and I still see that there, I'm glad that I see that, you know what I mean? Because why should things change 
And they try to make it change. They try to make it. But I don't know what they want. Gentrify and all that yeah. stuff. What do they want to do? But, but you know what? You know what? I learned. Me and Ramon always spoke about, and I learned it here with you guys. That me and Ramon have always said that New York. It doesn't matter your religion, your race, or whatever. It has its own culture within it. Right. Yeah. Because yeah. we're so you know condensed, and we go through so many similar things in our neighborhoods that it, that the color and the race shit goes out the window because you become part of the New. York your culture that comes, mm -hmm. it starts, yeah. it gets ingrained be, aside from where your parents came from. I would never change it for anything. You could hand me like tons of money. I would never change the way I grew up. I would never change it. I love the way I grew up. So now I'm going to throw y'all off a little bit. I'm going to hit y'all off with a little bit. Uh, a stoner question. Can y'all both give me like your favorite munchie? What's your favorite? Oh, favorite oh, you mean right munchie? now? Or yeah, before? right now. I'll give you right, right now. Tell me right, right now. now. What's your favorite munchie at a, like your, the moment? <sighs> you know what I mean? Like, damn, I just finished doing some art. Let me smoke this joint. What I'm about to eat. Chicharrones is so donuts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what's your go-to? What's your go-to candy? Shrimp, bro. Shrimp, shrimp is the go-to right now. The munchies. Yeah, because he's in Puerto Rico, so you you know the night like, you you eat five well, shrimp nah, and shit like that. Shit. No, no, bro. Like I told him, bro, I'm in a mountain, bro. I'm so high up in that mountain, man. People go to the store on their horses, bro. <laughs> Ain't no shrimp up in that mountain. <laughs> My favorite food is arroz con pollo, bro. Oh. Because, because there was this lady on the fifth floor that looked oh, right across man. from Mike's house. She used to cook this big pot of food, and we used to smell and say, yo, what is she doing? She's like, baby, I get, because she didn't speak no English. Hey, get, you know, all those food, she's going to feed you, yeah, she's going to feed you. Let me feed the gratitos. Yeah, and she the fed us, bro. A lot of times she fed us, bro. Good lady, bro. Mm -hmm. and, and from that time, I always loved the food. It was, it's in my mind, it's stuck in my mind. When I get hungry, that's what I want. <laughs> that's what I want that's my munchies right there gentlemen I know you guys don't know as much as about us because you know you guys just learned recently about us but we asked all our guests a million dollar question mm. I'm really interested in hearing yours because yeah. you guys are triple OG's you guys are people that we look up to and we really value your opinion so we want to know what you guys think about it so the question we ask everybody gentlemen is if you had to describe Happy Monkey the movement the everything that the company embodies what we represent here what in one word what would the one word be and why we start with Steve Mr. SJK you guys have a good meaning with this culture that you're putting together, you know, with, with the, the happy monkey. Um, because it, 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 people can, if you br bring it out more, as you're doing right now, because you're inviting, you know, certain people that know about cultures and stuff, of how people grew up, they're going to understand a lot about this. And that's how they're going to embrace it. By you guys doing what you're doing right now, and I'm I'm blessed to be here, and thank you, really, you know, that you nah, guys are doing man. it for us. Thank really. you for those kind words, dude. Yeah. You, Henry, if you had to describe it in one word, what it represents, the movement, everything, and why. I'm gonna give it to you in Spanish. Ah, ah, um, Cause Steve gave it to you in English, man. Pero la mía, mi una palabra que yo puedo pensar es palante. Palante. Why palante? Which yeah. means like moving forward. forward. Why you know, forward? Because you know you're 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 moving. You you have an agenda ahead of you, and you're moving forward with it in spite of what you have surrounding you at That's at right. these times. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. I've been around sixty three years, and I ain't never seen it like this, man. Shit crazy, you know. That's and y'all got y'all. I see y'all keep pushing it forward. And, and you're not leaving us behind, okay? Damn. Whereas it's happening as we speak, man. They're forgetting about us, the seniors, and they're forgetting about y'all too, man. You know what I'm saying? Oh, Especially yeah. if you're broke. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's just the way it is, you know? So for me, it's palante. Palante, you know, I like that. Bro, That's Thank you for us. Nobody ever used that, man. You guys, bro, thank you, man. Now, that both of you guys, hard, man, man, I know that you guys got a lot of upcoming projects. I want yeah. you to tell the people, you know, how they can find you guys. What should they expect from you guys for yeah. the rest of 2020? And how could they keep up to date on what amazing things you guys are going to unveil for them? I, I have Instagram. 
I'm under SJK17, oh, SJK underscore 171. Mm -hmm. If people want to look me up, you know, I got a, lo a lot, lot of love there where I express myself in art and friends and, um, you know, just, just growing up and just experience a lot of different things. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. Check out my boy SJK. He got a lot coming. Now you, Henry, tell them how they could keep up to you, how they could find you. Um, well, you know, honestly speaking, bro, with this technology, I'm not that good on it, bro. All I have is a phone and an iPad, bro, and an email. <laughs> and it's henry.medina57 at yahoo.com. There you guys you know, have it, man. If you guys want to reach out to a legend, hit them up. Facebook. I don't know nothing else, man. All these <laughs> other websites and apps and all that, I don't know how to not do none of that. I know Facebook. If you want to find me, that's the way I am, bro. Because, you know, that's that's, that's all to it. But I know, but I know before know. we leave, everybody, please check out the book. I know they, they, they got a book that they come out in. It's called Wall Riders, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, right? Wall Riders, okay? yes. So they definitely check that out and definitely Google that. And please, please, please support the legends. This is New York. Legends, this is graffiti legends, this is life legends. Everybody, let's go! Everybody, one more round of applause for the legends, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. We gave you what we like to give you here on the boulevard past, present, future. Show you how cultures come about, how the OGs put it down yes, yes, for you guys to see a lot of the art and the graffiti you see in the streets today. For now, we know that it's been a rough year, like my man Henry said, but we gotta stay positive and optimistic. Yes, so remember, ladies and gentlemen, you're too, too blessed to be stressed. Things will get greater right later. For now, checking out Henry, Vlad, Ramon, yes, yes, Steve, yes, 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 till the yes. next episode. Peace, love, and happiness, Yeehaw. everyone. Peace. Peace out, guys. What's good, everybody? This is your nigga Ralph trying to keep you fresh with the info from Happy Monkey every single podcast. You already know what it is. If you haven't followed us yet, follow us on Instagram at Happy Monkey underscore or Happy Monkey Goodies. Now, remember, that's monkey with a U. Also, if you haven't checked us out, we're on YouTube. So check out our channel, Happy Monkey TV. Keep us current, live, and everything with the culture.